Okay. Um, don't forget to check out the raffle items out on the registration table. Also, Rock from the Heart Apparel is available for purchase here. And if you're interested in volunteering for a future event, please talk with one of our team members or email us at office at rockfromtheheart.org and let us know what uh, topics you'd like to cover at future symposiums. <clears throat> okay, I'd like to introduce a uh, survivor, Kathy Jo Peterson. Kathy Jo lost her dad at age 49 to what was assumed to be a heart attack. Because of her obesity and food addiction, she thought she wouldn't live past 50, so she entered a food recovery program and lost 100 pounds. Just as things began looking better, she started having trouble breathing. A CAT scan revealed a narrowed trachea, a 5.2 centimeter aortic aneurysm, and a bicuspid aortic valve. She had immediate trachea surgery and was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Five months later, she had open heart surgery to repair the aortic aneurysm. Kathy Jo and her husband Jerry live in uptown Minneapolis. She'll be 60 this May and believes she now has a chance to live to be at least 85. Please welcome Kathy Jo Peterson. Hello, and yeah, I'm following the dietitian. I'm Kathy Jo Peterson. I'm a recovered compulsive overeater. I have not had sugar in 10 years, fried foods in six, alcohol in six. So you might see me pulling out a little bowl during dinner that has my spinach, et cetera, in it because I need to be careful of fats, and I can't have a little bit of sugar. I'm going to say that. And I'm going to say I'm grateful that I have that disease. I also have the trachea disease, which is a rare disease. And the disease I have of um, heart disease, I'm grateful because my life has become so much more rich. I have met people, I mean, literally today, I sat down next to Kim. We met in rehab, and I started crying. How do you put into words the depth of the relationships that we form by living and walking with this, and our surgeons and our cardiologists, who to me are so intimate to me today. Um, my grandparents were dead by age two. By the time I was two years old, I never had grandparents. I know very little about that, but they were gone. My uncle Eddie died at age 36. And I was told a story that he arrived drunk at my dad's restaurant at 10.30 in the morning in Sioux City, Iowa. And my dad said, get the hell out of here. He walked across the street and fell down the steps and died of a heart attack. The minute I found out I had a bicuspid valve and it was a hereditary disease, I looked at my cardiologist, Dr. Fanola, and I said, when you're dissecting, can it look like you're drunk? I wonder today if my Uncle Eddie died of an aneurysm, which would have been in 1959. My dad told me my whole life, I'm not going to live very long. He also was a compulsive overeater that weighed about 350 pounds. He smoked three packs of cigarettes a day, and he died when he was 49 of a heart attack. The weekend that he died, he was puking blood. I asked Dr. Fanola when I was stopped in my tracks with my diagnosis and said, do you puke blood when you dissect? And she said, you can. So they did, they did not do an autopsy on my dad, I don't know. But um, right before my dad died, he said, take care of your health, honey. And at that time, I was going to Overeaters Anonymous, and I was sugar-free. And I decided I didn't need to go there anymore. And I proceeded to leave. And within three days, I was eating with a vengeance. And I lived the next 22 years over 3,300 pounds. 
and I had a car accident in 2011, and I was at a bottom. And somehow or another, I ended up in treatment, which I needed in order to get separated from compulsive overeating. And I began to lose weight, and I began to feel good. And I was literally on top of the game, feeling great, happy. And all of a sudden, I lost my job, and my mother-in-law had a stroke. And I did find out after the fact, with trachea disease, it can get worse with stress. So here I was with two big stressors, and I was at my mother-in-law's funeral, and my son was following me around. He was 19, saying, Mom, you sound like Darth Vader. I found out later, he's cute, he's smart, but if you go look up idiopathic subglottic tracheal stenosis, you'll read, you have the Darth Vader voice. So anyway, and then my brother and Jerry's uncle were following me around saying, go to a doctor. I also did not go to doctors. I can't remember who said that. I think it was Mike, but I never went to the doctor. I was never sick. But anyway, I went to the doctor and I failed. I went to the best allergy, asthma, lung doctor. It starts with a K at Abbott. I can't remember his name right now. And he did all these tests on me, and I failed every single one. I couldn't breathe. I was terrible. And he said, you need to go next door for a CAT scan. And I'm like, CAT scan? And as I'm walking through the, whatever you want to call it, Skyway of Abbott over things by McDonald's <laughs> in Abbott. <laughs> anyway, I um, went, I have breast cancer. And my whole life I thought, oh my gosh, I can't get breast cancer. And I was somebody that got to 300 on organic Cheetos and organic Oreos. And just so you know, they have them. I can tell you the brands if you ever want to know. But I never thought I'm going to die of heart disease, even though Uncle Eddie died of a heart attack, Uncle or my dad died of a heart attack, supposedly, and my uncle and my aunt died of aneurysm, abdominal aneurysms. I thought, I'm going to die of cancer. I was deluded. But anyway, so I had the CAT scan. He called me that doctor later that afternoon. And he said, Kathy Joe, you are a very sick woman. You have two things going on. One, you have idiopathic subglottic tracheal stenosis, <laughs> which is a narrowing of the trachea. My trachea was the size of a straw. It's supposed to be a garden hose. You're going to be having surgery very soon. And you also have... And I thought to myself, breast cancer. You also have an aneurysm on your aorta. I was like, oh. And you need to see a cardiologist within three to six months. And I thought, I just have this little dot. And they're going to give me baby aspirin. And then when I'm like 70, they're going to say, we could do surgery, but you're kind of old now, so maybe you don't want to do it. And I don't understand it all, but I trust my doctors. I believe this process is all about surrender. And I think they needed to make sure <laughs> that they got my trachea opened <laughs> and that they could intubate me for surgery, even though they knew it was 5.2, they didn't tell me, because they want to make sure that I stay open. Because some people close right away after this um, trachea surgery. You have to have it repeatedly. I've had it twice. But there are people that have it every six weeks. So they probably wanted to make sure I stayed open. So I stayed open. And at that time, I did not have health insurance. And I ended up, because I didn't have a job, but I ended up, it cost like $8,000 out of the pocket for that surgery. And I got a new job that had crazy good health insurance. So my open heart surgery ended up costing me $600. And I ended up going into Dr. Fanola, and that's when she told me, you have a, after some tests, you have a bicuspid valve, which is hereditary, and you are 5.2, and I had been looking it up and going on all these groups and everything. 
It said if you're tall, you can wait a little longer. And then she said, yeah, but you have a bicuspid valve, which we don't know how long you can wait, so you need to have surgery sooner than later. And I was like, okay, well, I have a big event at work in October, and then I'm going on to Christmas vacation for two weeks, so can we do this in January? She said, you're not going through the holidays with this aneurysm. So she put two dates on the table, and one of them was my dad's birthday, October 3rd. He died right before age 50, before his 50th birthday, and I really felt like that was a message from God. And she looked at me and she said, people as healthy as you bounce right back. And I couldn't believe that someone was telling me, the girl that weighed 300 pounds most of her life, that I was going to bounce right back. And I ended up having the surgery, but I, I know. So I'm on Facebook, and even though Amy mentioned it, I found Amy and Pete. And Pete's the first guy that I met that I could literally, I didn't say it, but you had open heart surgery and you did not die. <laughs> it was like I wanted to meet somebody. And then um, Dr. Finola also had me talk to a guy on the phone. His name's Andy that was in the video. Um, my... Mom came down to care for me during, after surgery. My sister flew down before the surgery. My sister-in-law came. My other sister came. I never once had to get an Uber for rehab, which I went because they told me to. I got rides from friends every single time. I was very blessed through the whole process. And then in the back of my mind, I was like hereditary, my kids. They need to be tested. And I remember I was on the phone with Amy one night, and I said, Charlie's home for, for President's Day weekend, and he's going to have his um, test tomorrow to find out if he's bicuspid. And she said, you realize that if they find out he's bicuspid, he might never qualify for life insurance, which, by the way, I don't anymore. <laughs> it expires in, like, two months, and I can't get life insurance. I, my ticker might be better than my hubby's back there, but, you know. Anyway, so Amy ended up hooking me up with playing for Pat Patrick, or players for Patrick. This little 14-year-old boy made the winning goal in a hockey tournament. I believe it was in Brainerd. He collapsed, and he died. His um, aorta ruptured. It did not dissect. It ruptured. And they started this nonprofit, and they show up at hockey tournaments and test athletes. Well, it turned out they do hockey kids under age 18. There was this huge snowstorm. So somehow or another, Amy and I emailed the founders who still were going to do it, and they tested my kids. They could squeeze them in because there was less people there that weekend. And neither of my children are bicuspid, thank God. When they double-checked it. <laughs> After we sat down, the, the guy that was a retired, I don't know, he read the ultrasounds, is that what it is? I don't even, echoes, whatever. He said, um, let's just look again. And then he did, and then he came back to the table with a big smile, and he goes, I saw three valves. And that was very relieving to hear. Anyway, um, I never dreamed that I would be able to have a story that's positive to help people with such a hard prognosis. But for anyone that hasn't had surgery, I, you, John, you don't know, but your mom was up here earlier. Rosie already talked. But again, Rosie at age 80, not at age 81. Were you 79? Now you're 80. She doesn't like me adding a year to her age. She had emergency open heart surgery, and she's another miracle in this room. So there's a lot of support out there, and we do this together, and it makes me think of together our hearts beat as one. Thank you.
okay.